Okay, today is a very different video. I've had a lot of questions about love it or list it, meaning should you renovate your house or should you move? So today I'm bringing in my friend Mike. He is the co-founder of North Power Mortgages and he's gonna talk with us about the math. Don't be scared. It's good, it's gonna help us learn. I'm excited to learn and share with you guys. Good to see you. <laughs> I'm really excited to share your knowledge because everybody knows that math is not my thing and I know renovations really well and I know what sells a house, but I really don't know the numbers. So yeah, let's break down the numbers. I think it's pretty simple. You, first of all, you look very dapper in your uh, blazer. I'm feeling a little bit outdressed. I, I, I'm just trying to keep up with the uh, with the flow. Very summery. Look at that. He even has a monogram shirt. Details. Everything's in the details, and that's where you know we're really going to get to today. I think. Awesome. The details. Details. I always say that. Should you renovate or should you move? Yeah, I think we see it a lot, especially you know it's funny to think that a mortgage broker and a designer can have a lot of things in common. Um, we have clients that come in all the time. They want to talk about renovating, um, and they have a good budget, healthy budget. Um, but then they always say, well, maybe I can move. So what would be a healthy budget? I think we have to look at it today and we have to realize that, you know, we're going to run some math and the math we're going to run is based on clients that own a property that's worth approximately about a million dollars. Um, Which and, is quite typical in Toronto. So we're filming, we're talking mostly yeah, about Toronto absolutely. GTA. I know a lot of you don't even live in Canada, but just to give you an idea, this will apply to different cities, but these numbers really apply mostly to Toronto. So if we assume that the client has currently a million dollar property um, and they have a budget to renovate of about $250,000, um, that's a pretty decent budget depending on you know the size of your scope of your project. So if I have $200,000 and I'm thinking, mm, do I want to do my kitchen and my main floor, maybe add a powder room, or you know what, I don't want to live through a reno, yep. let's just buy a house that's $200,000 more. Yep. Am I really getting everything I want for $200,000 more? Well, that's where it gets interesting because that's where you're going to see what gets lost in the transaction. Uh, there's a cost to every transaction. Let's start off with the biggest one. Um, it's real estate commission. So typically you're looking at around roughly 5% for real estate commission. 5% of this, of the sale price of, of the sale price. Your house. Okay. That the first cost right there uh, to sell a million dollar property uh, in Toronto at 5% is going to be $50,000. Uh, so that's the first thing that some people, you know, don't think of when they list their home and sell it. Mm -hmm. Totally. Uh, so out of that $250,000 budget that we were talking about, uh, you've already lost $50,000. So right there, you only have $200,000 that you're really going to have um, to buy that house. Right. So that's the first thing. Then we get into what most people always forget is the HST on that $50,000. Mm. But do you still have to pay HST if it's your primary residence? You have to pay HST on the commission paid to the real estate agent. Oh, so it's 50,000 plus 13% thir here 50, in Ontario. 000. So that is now $56,500. Yeah, that's math I could not do. So that's just for selling that. I need him in my office. You Can you come work for exactly. me? <laughs> I can't I'll, work, I'll work from there one day a week. <laughs> just do the math. Um, we haven't talked about any other costs for perhaps potentially staging the house. Mm. Um, any upkeep that has to be done to sell the house in a quick, timely manner and to try and get top dollar. You sold your home. You need to find a place to live. You're thinking to yourself, I'm going to go up to that next level because I had $250,000. I might be able to find something I like, but now I've got to buy. You might be able to find something you like. And this is where I will interject to say that just because you have a little bit more money or a lot more money, you may not find the house in the exact state that you want. So it may not have the right type of kitchen. Totally. It may not have the right kind of flooring. It may not have the aesthetic stuff that you want. And it also may not function for your family, but it's the price that you have to pay and it's maybe the size that you want. I, I don't, I rarely find a, a client that comes in and says, I found exactly what I want in the location I want. At the price, At the price I, I want. want. Yeah. It's usually, oh my God, I found the perfect house. <laughs> it's way past my budget. <laughs> So let's talk about what the costs are associated with that. There's more costs. More costs. Uh, you're going to buy a home. 
could be a 100-year-old home in the city of Toronto. You never know what, where it is. You're going to want a home inspection. Okay, it's $1,000. $1,000 in the grand scheme of things, not a big deal, but it adds up. So that's done. We do that. We need to find a lawyer to close the transaction. Ooh, what's that going to set you back? More than likely around $3,000. So we're jumping up to $4,000. Mm -hmm. So you're in the lawyer's office. You're going to be signing the paperwork and you're getting the rest of the bill. The rest of the bill includes your land transfer tax. That's the third. And that can be a really big ticket item. So, so how is that calculated? It is calculated on a tiered system um, broken down by the first 500000 onwards to your purchase price. In the city of Toronto, you calculate uh, your provincial land transfer tax and, you mean, and your municipal. To give you an illustration of what the cost would be associated with a $1.25 million purchase, mm -hmm. you're gonna looking at a roughly $43,000. Forty-three, four, three. Forty-three thousand dollars. Forty-three thousand in land transfer in land tax. Land transfer tax. Um, that is not a cost that you can get back. Mm -hmm. um, it is a pure cost. There's obviously moving expenses that you can mm -hmm. estimate. So when you total all those numbers, you're going to be looking at between a hundred and about one hundred and ten thousand dollars in terms of true costs. When we dull down, you so, had that two hundred and fifty thousand yeah. dollar budget. So you've actually just paid $110,000 to buy a home that is mm -hmm. maybe what you want. So are you saying then that even though I think I have 250,000 to buy the next house, I actually don't have 250, so I can't actually afford that 1.25 house? You may be able to afford it, but this is what if really I, ends up happening. Right. You have to end up borrowing more borrowing money. Borrowing more money. When you look at that, if you have the, ca if you have the cash, mm -hmm. you can physically spend the $250,000 on your current property and turn it into what you want. Right. Versus having to borrow more money and getting a different property. Even if you borrow money to renovate, yeah. you still can maximize that money more because you're not paying out of pocket for all the taxes and fees. Correct. If you're in the position where you can, you know, buy that new house and renovate and, you know, do all those things, it's a perfect world. Totally. Um, because, you know, you're getting a custom product that's perfect for you. Mm -hmm. um, there's no good answer, but I guess what we're talking about really here is understanding what you can get if you are spending the money. People who are looking to buy a house in their little pocket and they can't find it, they end up saying, well, I may as well renovate. Because you can really maximize the space in your house, at yeah. least in the houses in Toronto. You can add powder rooms to the second floor, bumping out a third story, adding a third story, adding a two story addition, digging out your basement. There's a lot of things you could do with that same amount of money. Or if you decided to borrow money, instead of borrowing to buy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, very well said. Thanks, thanks. Uh, that's been my experience as a designer and that's what I see. And then obviously from the other flip side with Mike seeing the number side of, here's the reality of what you can and cannot do. And I think it's important to know those secret surprises. Yeah, the lovely, the lovely surprises that you get at the end. Yeah. Uh, which we all forget about please plan everything ahead. So before you go and make an offer on a house, do your due diligence, you know, hire a mortgage broker, find out the numbers. You could do, you have a calculator on your website. Absolutely, we've got all the planning tools and calculators. Um, you know, we're free of charge, call us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can just plug in the numbers of what you're looking and it'll calculate everything for you so that you know what it's really gonna cost you to help you make that decision. If you guys have any comments or questions, please leave a comment below. Um, we'd love to hear from you. What did you like about this advice? Have you gone through something similar? Uh, maybe you don't live in Toronto and it's totally different. So please fill us in and we will link all of Mike's info below this video. Please give me a thumbs up <laughs> and subscribe to this channel if you don't already. And we'll see you soon. Thanks, thanks Mike. No worries, thanks. High five. Woo! <laughs> There's Chris, everybody. <laughs> the Pokeroo shows again. Do you have anything to add? Two. Renovate versus move. Expensive. Expensive, both? Sure. <laughs>